Thank you for joining us for a program overview presentation on the Missouri Department of Agriculture's Industrial Hemp Program. This presentation will discuss the basics of many elements of our program. More information on these topics is available throughout our website. You can get to our website from agriculture.mo.gov, then selecting the Plants and Pests tab. Then choose the Industrial Hemp Program option from the drop-down. Our program website is the best source for up-to-date regulatory information. Once on the program website, there is an additional menu that links various sub-pages including applications, registered producers, permit holders, and more. Each of these sub-pages provides a variety of resources including reports and forms, guidance and how-to documents, reporting deadlines, and more. If you have any questions after reviewing this presentation and looking through the website materials, feel free to contact us. The Industrial Hemp Program has two staff members. Alan Freeman is the Program Administrator, and Aaron Casey Campbell is the Program Coordinator. Alan and Aaron are also the inspectors for the program. Email is the best method of communication, so please try to get a hold of us through Hemp Program at mda.mo.gov. We are typically able to respond within one to two business days. Now a little bit about the program's history. In December 2018, the Agriculture Impro Improvement Act, also known as the Farm Bill, was signed into law. The 2018 Farm Bill provided the basic requirements for states, tribes, and territories to begin developing their plans for creating a commercialized industrial hemp production program. During this time, they were allowed to continue operating under the previous version of the Farm Bill that allowed hemp production for research. In October 2019, USDA published the Interim Final Rule that provided additional details that states, tribes, and territories would need to include in order to have an approved plan. Some examples of these provisions included a 15-day harvest window, parameters on sampling and testing, and annual reporting requirements. This interim final rule was a placeholder, as the name suggests, until a final rule was published. Soon after, in November of 2019, Missouri's proposed rules for the program were open for public comment, where nearly 200 comments were received and evaluated. Then, in January of 2020, Missouri's rules that incorporated the interim final rule requirements and public comment became effective. This allowed the program to begin accepting and approving applications, starting Missouri's first year of commercial industrial hemp production. While the 2020 production season was taking place, Missouri submitted the existing rules and protocols as the Missouri State Plan. That plan was approved by USDA in September of 2020 with no regulatory changes needed. In January 2021, USDA published the final federal rule. This included many new provisions that did not align with Missouri's approved state plan, such as a 30-day harvest window instead of 15, and the option for remediation. This final federal rule became effective in March of 2021 and gave states, tribes, and territories until the end of 2021 to have a new plan submitted and approved. Missouri filed an amended state plan under the new final rule, and in May of 2021, USDA approved this amended state plan. Once approved by USDA, the state plan could be implemented immediately 
and brings us to the program Missouri's producers will utilize for the 2021 production season and beyond. So now that we know a little background about the program, let's talk about what the program does and does not regulate. The program's regula regulatory authority is over viable industrial hemp. Viable industrial hemp is plant material capable of living or growing, such as seed and live plant material, including but not limited to clones, cuttings, seedlings, and other plants. In order to be considered industrial hemp, it cannot exceed 0.3 total THC. Beyond that, it is considered by definition marijuana. The program does not regulate non-viable industrial hemp. Non-viable industrial hemp is plant material that is not capable of living or growing, such as harvested fiber and seedless floral material. As a result of not regulating non-viable hemp, the program does not offer licenses for processors, extractors, handlers, transporters, or the like. Once an industrial hemp crop has tested compliant and is non-viable, it is considered a publicly marketable product. Although publicly marketable products are not regulated by our program, they may be regulated by other programs, agencies, or entities depending on their intended use. The industrial hemp program offers two main license types, the producer registration and the agricultural hemp propagule and seed permit, also known simply as a permit. The producer registration is required to produce or cultivate hemp in Missouri for any size of operation or intended use, whether it be for fiber, grain, seed, or flour. The Agricultural Hemp Propagule and Seed Permit is required to sell, distribute, or offer for sale any viable hemp. Remember, viable hemp means it is capable of living or growing, so things like seed and clones. This permit is not needed for the sales of non-viable materials. You must have one of the above to have viable hemp in Missouri. If your operation needs both, they are separate applications and separate fees. The basic requirements for our program applications are a completed application form, which is available on the Applications tab of our website, a background check for the applicant and executive managers, which much must provide evidence that none of those individuals have been convicted of a controlled substance related felony in the last 10 years. Application packets must also have a detailed map of the property and $750 per application, which is also due annually for renewal. Currently, this is a mail-in only process. The forms are available for download on our application's website, but the application forms and payments cannot be submitted online at this time. More information regarding the applications, background check process, mapping, and more are available on our application's website. There is no application submission deadline. They are open year-round, and are reviewed in the order in which we receive them. There is not a limit on the number of licenses issued, either statewide or on a county or local level, and there is no minimum or maximum size of operation. After you've been approved, your license information will be available on the publicly posted approved operations list. This list is available on our main webpage and includes license numbers, active status and expiration date, individual or business name depending on how you applied, 
and the city, state, and zip code of your business or mailing address. Please note that other information is available through Missouri Sunshine requests, so you may receive communications, including marketing materials from other entities. Once approved, you can purchase seed and or propagules from a variety of sources including Missouri permit holders, suppliers with an appropriate hemp license in another state, tribe, or territory, or a supplier approved by USDA for international import. Missouri producers are not limited to using certified seed or selecting from a list of approved varieties. However, records must be maintained regarding the reasonable efforts made to grow a legal crop. More on this in other presentations and guidance documents. Please note, viable hemp seed cannot be sold to the general public. Persons purchasing viable seed must be appropriately licensed in their respective state. You can produce anywhere within the registered parcel after you've been approved. The only program exception is that production cannot occur within a residential dwelling, including within a house, apartment, RV, or other similar dwellings. This includes temporary production, such as starting seedlings or rooting cuttings. There are no security requirements, such as fencing, cameras, or signage, but you are welcome to utilize those measures as you see fit, or if your local, city, or county requires it. There are also no zoning requirements or setback limits such as a minimum distance from a school or daycare, but again, you should check with your local officials to see if there are any requirements for your area. After approval, you can begin planting immediately. Planting must be reported in two ways. Within 30 days of planting, you must submit a planting report to us. This form is available on our website in the registered producers page. The other report is to the Farm Service Agency, also known as FSA. This is an agency of the USDA and is separate from the Missouri Department of Agriculture. They have account setup requirements that must be met prior to this planting report, so please check in with your local FSA office as soon as possible after you've been approved. A link to find your local FSA office is on the Registered Producers page and the Additional Resources page. In the MDA planting report, producers must identify their crops by lots. A lot is a group of plants of the same variety or strain grown in a continuous area. These lots must be physically separated and clearly defined or labeled on site. Other reporting requirements include the lot report, which is required for each lot of industrial hemp and is similar to a crop notebook that records planting, sampling, testing, and harvest information and the distribution and sales report, which is for permit holders, is a record of transactions for all viable sales. All records must be retained for three years, including if your license is no longer active. Each fall, you must also complete an annual report. This report is a brief summary of your production activities that year inc that include total acres planted, harvested, and destroyed. Instructions and updated forms are provided prior to the due date each fall. License holders are also subject to inspection and should expect a minimum of one inspection per three year period. Inspections include a review of records, including from previous years, and a crop inspection.
Although not regulated by the industrial hemp program directly, proper pesticide use is vital and is regulated by the pesticide program of the Missouri Department of Agriculture. In order for a pesticide to be utilized on your hemp crop, the product must first be labeled for use on hemp. The EPA has approved 59 products for use on hemp as of May 2021. The link shown here can be used to check for any new products or approval changes. After the EPA has approved a product, the product must be registered in Missouri. The second link shown can be used to cross-reference if an EPA-approved product is registered in Missouri. The final link is a publication provided by the University of Missouri Extension where they have cross-referenced these two requirements and compiled a list of pesticide options. However, you should check the original EPA and MDA resources prior to applying anything to ensure you have the most updated information. Each lot, such as was identified on the planting reports, must be sampled for compliance within 30 days prior to harvest in accordance with the MDA sampling protocol. The MDA sampling protocol is available on the program website. This pre-harvest compliance sample is actually a composite sample with plant material being collected from a random selection of plants from across the area. The amount of plant material collected is determined by the size of the lot. Harvest cannot occur prior to this compliance sample collection. However, once the compliance sample is collected, you can begin harvesting immediately up through the 30th day after sampling. If you cannot complete harvest of all plants within that lot within the 30 days, you must redefine the remaining plants as a new lot and resample. These compliance samples are collected by third party individuals called Certified Industrial Hemp Samplers, or CIHS for short. These individuals are certified by the department, but are not employees, representatives, inspectors, or contractors of the department and cannot make any compliance determinations. Certified samplers cannot collect samples for themselves, their employer, or for a registration in which they are a key participant. Also, non-compliant samples are often collected to monitor the cannabinoid content as the crop progresses. These types of non-compliant samples do not have to be collected by certified samplers, but they can be. In order to become certified, these individuals must complete a training course, pass the exam with a score of 80% or better, and submit an application and fee. A list of certified individuals is available on the program website and is updated approximately monthly or as needed. After a compliance sample is collected, it must be sent to a qualified testing laboratory. Missouri producers may select any testing laboratory, including those out of state, that are ISO 17025 accredited. After December 31st, 2022, the lab must also be DEA registered. Labs must also meet state and federal reporting and testing requirements. And the lab should meet your business needs, including price, turnaround time, and other available tests such as terpenes and heavy metals, if applicable. There is not a comprehensive list of qualified labs available at this time, but USDA does have a list of DEA-registered labs 
and labs often clearly advertise their ISO status online. THC compliance for industrial hemp crops is determined by the threshold of 0.3% total THC. This has always been the requirement for Missouri's industrial hemp producers and will be the national standard as of January 1, 2022. The total THC may be found by a calculation where 87.7% of the THCA measurement is added to the Delta 9 THC measurement. Or the total THC may be directly measured after a process called decarboxylation. This process converts the THCA into Delta 9 THC. Compliance is also determined in part by the measurement of uncertainty which is a laboratory calculated figure, similar to a margin of error, that creates a range. Shown here are the test results for three different lots. The line across the middle represents the 0.3% total THC compliance threshold, also known as the acceptable hemp THC level. The squares represent the total THC measurement. As shown here for lots 1 and 3, the total THC measurement exceeds the THC threshold, making them fails. The middle lot, lot 2, is below the threshold, making it a pass result. When you include the measurement of uncertainty, however, things can change. The I bars shown here represent the range created by the MU. The MU is lab calculated and therefore can vary. Let's take a look at lot number one. Although the total THC measured above 0.3, the range created by the MU is now below the threshold. This now makes lot number one a compliant crop. Now, looking at lot number two, even though the range now exceeds the threshold, the measurement itself is below 0.3. Therefore, there is no compliance change. It remains a passing crop. This would be the same case if the range created by the MU was entirely below the threshold. Finally, looking at lot number three, the range created by the MU does not quite reach below the threshold, and therefore lot number three remains as a failing crop. If your compliance test result is at or below 0.3 total THC, you have a compliant result. Those test results, also known as certificates of analysis, or COAs, must be submitted to the department within seven days of receipt. Please note this is an updated timeline from the 2020 requirements. Some labs will send results to the department directly, but not all. It is your responsibility to ensure the results are submitted within the allotted window. Once you have your compliant test result and the lot is harvested, and non-viable, the products are no longer regulated by the industrial hemp program and may enter the stream of commerce. The products themselves may be regulated by other programs, agencies, or entities depending on their use. For example, products that are intended for human consumption are regulated by the FDA and the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. If your compliance test results are above 0.3 total THC, you have a non-compliant lot. Those test results, also known as Certificates of Analysis or COAs, must also be submitted to the department within seven days of receipt. Please note, this is an updated timeline from the 2020 requirements. 
if you have non-compliant result, you can request the lab to retest the sample they already have on hand. Sometimes this is done if the result is very close or if you believe there has been a mistake. If no retest is requested or the retest is also hot, the lot must be remediated or destroyed. A lot can be remediated if the pre-harvest sample exceeds 0.3% total THC. This is a new option for 2021. The first step in remediation is the remediation method. There are two options. Option A, shown here, is homogenizing, where the entire lot, including all above ground plant parts, is ground into a uniform biomass-like substance. Option B is where the floral material is destroyed and the stems or stalks are retained. This option is common for fiber varieties. The next step in remediation, no matter the method chosen, is resampling and retesting. The MDA sampling protocol outlines the processes for remediation sampling. Certified samplers must collect these samples as well, and the, sample, and the same laboratory qualifications are required. Regardless of results, these COAs must be submitted to the department within seven days as well. If the remediation test results are still non-compliant, the lot must be destroyed. If the remediation test results are now at or below 0.3% total THC, the eligible materials may enter commerce and are no longer regulated by the industrial hemp program. However, as previously mentioned, the products themselves may be regulated by other programs, agencies, or entities, depending on their use. Seeds from remediated crops cannot be used for propagation. If a crop must be destroyed, the program will issue an order of destruction. This order outlines details, deadlines, and applicable contact information for step number three. Next, the producer completes the destruction of the associated lot or lots. This can be done through approved methods that are generally common on-site farm practices like disking, plowing, and composting that render the entire crop unusable, and non-retrievable. Then, the Missouri State Highway Patrol will certify that the destruction is complete. In some instances, Highway Patrol may delegate this service to a local law enforcement agency, but all communication regarding certification must be initiated with the Missouri State Highway Patrol at the contact number provided on the order of destruction. Something else important to note is what is sometimes referred to as the three strikes rule. Any producer who receives three negligence violations within a five year period will be ineligible to produce hemp for five years, starting on the date of the last violation. Examples of negligent violations include producing without a license, producing on an unlicensed site, and producing a crop that exceeds 1% total THC. If you have any questions regarding this presentation or topics not covered by this presentation, there are several additional resources available on our website, or you can contact us at hempprogram at mda.mo.gov.